So recently there have been headlines reported across the country that the foreclosure crisis is over and in fact real estate prices are increasing and somehow suggesting that we've come out of this real estate trouble that we've been in for many years. Well, I want to talk this morning about something that's going to have a devastating impact on real estate all across the state of Florida and in fact in coastal regions all across the country and that's the Bigger Waters Flood Act. Now, the Bigger Waters Flood Act uh, is going to have dramatic impact on the cost of flood insurance for properties uh, all across the state of Florida in particular. Now, here in the Tampa Bay area, in Pinellas County in particular, we're going to be affected more than any other county in the entire country. That's right. Pinellas County is going to have the most dramatic impact uh, on flood insurance premium increases as a result of the Bigger Waters Flood Act. And what's going to happen is we're going to have entire regions that are going to be devastated because of the cost of flood insurance. And again, Pinellas County is going to be impacted by this more than any other county in the entire country. What happens is flood insurance uh, typically wasn't much of a consideration when someone goes to buy a property. It's a couple hundred bucks at most uh, a month and certainly uh, easy for most anybody to, to pay for but what's happening is the flood insurance uh, premiums are going to be increasing quite dramatically uh, all across the state and devastatingly so in many of the coastal areas. Now, one of the misconceptions is that this issue is just going to affect all those rich people living in big houses right on the water and nothing could be further from the truth. The fact of the matter is that those big waterfront mansions are going to be far less affected than the smaller house that's right across the street. Uh, which is going to have a far greater impact uh, than that big mansion built across the uh, street directly on the water that was probably built up high above the flood level, so it's not going to be impacted as much. Um, I want to consider a real-world example, and, and that would be an area like Shore Acres. Shore Acres is in uh, the southern part of Pinellas County, right on the bay, and it's built in a very low-lying area, thousands of homes in there, very modest homes built around 50s and 60s, you know, you're looking at values right now of two hundred, maybe three hundred thousand dollars. Well, the premiums in that area for flood insurance uh, may be a thousand dollars or so existing, but uh, a new premium on there, if you tried to purchase that home, may be up to something like ten, twelve thousand dollars. I want you to think about that. If you got a home that's worth two hundred thousand dollars, and now the premium for flood insurance has gone up to say ten thousand dollars all of a sudden that flood insurance becomes an impossible barrier for someone to own the home and to have the flood insurance on there. And so what happens to that home with a value of say $200,000 is it becomes absolutely worthless. You have a piece of real estate, you've got a home that someone lives in that has absolutely no value because it cannot be sold. Now, we already know that realtors are telling us, people are saying, I will not look at properties in flood areas. And so, again, you're going to have entire areas that are going to be off the market. People are not going to consider even buying in areas like uh, Shore Acres or uh, Venetian Isles or Snell Isle here in Pinellas County. But, again, look at the coast of Florida. This affects every coastal community in Florida, and we uh, are going to have dramatic impact. Think about that. That's hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of dollars worth of property that are going to have dramatically decreased value as a result of this congressional act. Now, people ask, surely this can't be so, or surely there must be some way out of this. And the fact of the matter is there just isn't. I mean, the law is what it is. It's passed right now. And quite frankly, it's very unlikely that it's going to be rolled back. Now, there are two sections of it, and it impacts those that live in properties a little bit less conceivably than those who might purchase these properties, but I'd argue that uh, it affects both, and here's why. Uh, Bigger Waters says that if you already own a property, the maximum increase per year of the flood insurance premium is going to be 20%. But the fact of the matter is that while your uh, premium may only be going up 20% a year because it goes up 20% per year until it meets, meets its actuarial uh, rate, that means it's going to go up indefinitely until the cost of that policy is factored into every single monthly payment. So the, it's going to be slow death uh, for those existing homeowners that, that can count on a 20% increase a year in their flood insurance. But the real dramatic impact is if, if that homeowner tried to sell their home. Let's say we've got two homes built in the 60s. Uh, let's say they've been rehabbed recently and this current boom contractor came out and replaced all the windows and did all kinds of cosmetic stuff, put in a new kitchen. Let's say you put $100,000 into that home. 
Um, prior to bigger waters, you might have thought you had a value of, say, $500,000. But take the exact same home with the exact same square footage that's built up eight feet higher. Well, if, if both of those homes were worth $500,000 prior to bigger waters, but now the home that's built below the floodplain has a $12,000 insurance uh, a year premium, then arguably that home that's built lower has hundreds of thousands of dollars less value than the home that's built up six feet. Because if you're a prospective purchaser and you're looking at these two homes, which are otherwise totally equal, one that's got a $12,000 a year insurance premium, one that's got a $2,000 a year premium, all of a sudden this home becomes completely worthless and, and out of consideration for sale. So the impact is already being felt, and it's going to have a con consequence all across markets, all across the state. Now, a couple things that are just devastating about this. First of all, the National Association of Realtors, who are now screaming about this, or I guess maybe the Florida Realtors that are screaming about this, aren't taking into consideration the fact that the National Association of Realtors supported this bill. Um, other things just devastating. Florida's congressional delegation, those people that are up there that are supposed to be representing us, the citizens of the state of Florida, they voted for this piece of legislation. And so they're responsible for it. They're responsible for this crash that's going to come. Now, the Bigger Waters Flood Act comes right at the same time that Florida's courts are responding to pressure from the legislative branch to flush out these foreclosure cases. Remember, the entire legislative session, there was not a single word uttered about Bigger Waters Flood Act and how this was going to have a devastating impact on the value of real estate all across the state of Florida. Instead, legislators were up there in Tallahassee telling the consumers, telling citizens that we needed to flush these consumers out of these foreclosures. We needed to get these foreclosures out and throw those consumers out of the street completely disregarding the fact that uh, the vast majority of that property winds up back in the hands of uh, banks and institutions who then sell them to investors. But consider what's going to happen now. Now those investors and the banks have to take into consideration the Bigger Waters Flood Act. And so you're going to have a dramatically decreased value in the properties that are coming out as a result of the foreclosure purge. Our courts and our legislature need to take a step back from where they're uh, acting right now and stop pushing these foreclosures as fast as they are because they're pushing them into an already devastated market. Now, I'm quite frankly surprised that the servicers have not yet sent out accounting escrow statements because when they do their escrow analysis and they find out that they've only been collecting $1,200 a year for uh, flood insurance, but that they should be collecting, say, $12,000 per year, uh, the consumer is going to get a statement saying that, congratulations, your house payment just went up $1,000 per month. That, of course, is going to have devastating impact all across the state once consumers start to get these escrow notices from their banks. Now, there's another uh, one that is going to have a real devastating impact. Let's say that you purchased a home in the middle of this boom right now. You paid $500,000 for that home in a low-lying area on a canal or somewhere in the state of Florida. And when you closed, your insurance policy for flood was sixteen. Let's call two thousand dollars. Well, now uh, they're going to come out and reassess that property and reassess that flood insurance. And your flood insurance premium that was two thousand dollars is going to be twenty thousand dollars. That is not an unrealistic example. So you're going to have consumers that are going to be getting uh, uh, monthly payments bumping up by thousands of dollars a month already into a softening real estate market. How many of those folks are just going to let that lapse and trigger a whole new wave of foreclosures? Um, there are going to be a couple of videos coming up here and some more information that I'll append on to this YouTube thing, including an online seminar that's going to be targeted directly at realtors and other consumers. Um, I'll put the date right on here so you can click on and log on to that seminar. But watch this one. It's going to be devastating for consumers in the market all across the state of Florida. And yet another example of how the government has utterly failed to protect the consumers that they had an absolute right and obligation to protect.